I need to say we always have a bias. We have the good cases in mind forever. Sure. So surprising responses to chemotherapy with complete responses. I saw some cases, yeah. long lasting, I guess they were cured, you know. Yes with chemotherapy, but you know, the bad cases you forget, and yeah. this is the vast majority, sure. 90 or 95 percent of the cases. Mm. And so therefore, I'm not, I'm not uh, sure if the immunotherapy uh. is, is, you know, we see some late responses, particularly with PD-1 antibodies, you can see a shift, you know, very late from stable disease to partial to complete responses, so it could be a, uh, a late response, but the patient is not, not caring about it, the patient it's having a nice a response, response which yeah. is hopefully long lasting so patient is not asking for the mode of action we are asking for it because we are surprised but you know chemotherapy for me is still a last line treatment and i would call it a bridging therapy right not i i like this term but i like to make one point the only convincing data i have seen in patients who have received ipilimumab ipi plus nevo and all of this stuff is on adoptive t-cell transfer this 32% complete responses published, you know, by the Rosenberg Group and the cases by Jakob Schachter from Tel Aviv are really convincing. The only issue with adoptive T-cell transfer and the tumor infiltrating lymph cells I have is, is this highly selected patients? Are they taking just the best of the best patients with positive predictive factors? And now, because we have not the, as many trials as in Paris, I had the offer now to be part of a clinical trial on uh, till cells. And there's a trial coming to Germany with multiple centers where the tools are produced professionally outside of the centers and we can take part. And this is a wonderful option for my patients because all of my patients can be included, whether they had one, two or three lines of treatment. And this is the ideal scenario for the beer of wild type patients. So, so do, are you telling me that IL-2 is not dead? IL-2 is dead because it was never alive in Europe, because it was never approved. I don't know any clinical center in Europe who's using IL-2. There is one exception. In Denmark, in Denmark, the hard surprisingly, it's not approved but used. Really? The combo with interferon alpha. Really? But, Michael, uh, do you ever use hydrocyl 2 it's, it's actually, in the U.S., the one approved treatment for metastatic melanoma that we haven't discussed at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> IL-2, uh, exactly. And it's interesting. Some of our historical treatments, like IL-2, have, I think, been supplanted by a lot of our new treatments like we've been talking about, the BRAF MEK inhibitors, immune checkpoint inhibitors, but the reality is they don't work any less well now than they ever did in the past because we have new drugs that might be better. I think there could still be a role for some of these treatments, including IL-2 and including chemotherapy, and of course we want to try to recruit patients for clinical trials, but IL-2, absolutely, there's that group of patients that can have those long-term complete responses now. It's not as many people as we would want, between 5 and 10 percent, unfortunately. But uh, there is still a signal, there is still some efficacy, and if patients have difficult times accessing clinical trials, they've had checkpoint inhibitors and they've had BRAF and MEK inhibitors, I think it is something that still enters into the discussion. And just to make the comment on chemotherapy as well, there is still a response rate with chemotherapy, and I think that it's worth talking to patients about that, especially if they're having difficulties accessing clinical trials. There's a number of eligibility restrictions on clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patients geographically cannot participate in clinical trials. And, Chemotherapy still may have a role in these patients after they've had other drugs like checkpoint inhibitors, maybe IL-2, BRAF and MEK inhibitors, and it doesn't work any less well now because we've had other drugs that have shown better benefits. Now, some physician says chemotherapy doesn't work. Let's forget it. I will give you immunotherapy, targeted therapy, it's so good. We have to be careful because if the patient does not respond to anything and then you end up saying that you have nothing or chemotherapy, then the patient feel very, I mean, how does he feel or how does she feel? Because but you said before it doesn't work. So you have to be, I mean, careful. But <laughs> those are the patients who should be going on a trial. I mean, and just to segue to the issue it's of trials. It's not always possible. Yeah. It's not That's always That's true. Possible. Not all patients are yeah. eligible for trials, although no. at least in the States, mm. I think eligibility criteria are loosening up, which has always been a problem. It could, used to be that you could never put an ocular melanoma patient on. Yeah. It used to be that brain metastases yeah. at any point in their course was, mm -hmm. a, was an exclusion, but that's not but, always but true. But Jeff, honestly, regarding clinical trial access, you know, you're living in a paradise in the United States. Very many of the phase one trials in patients who had received every treatment and were refractory are uh, going to the US mm -hmm. and not to Europe. And you know, Paris is a hub, you know, it's, it's Zurich, so we are, we are discussing a luxury situation. Mm. But in the vast majority of 
countries in Europe, there is no clinical trial available and there is none of the new drugs available. And I, I, I'm bringing this up here just to mention it because there was a nice survey from uh, Lydia Sikulovic from, from Serbia and she was figuring out that 5,000 metastatic melanoma patients stage four have no access to any of the new drugs. And this was brought to European Journal of Cancer, to the European Parliament and to ESMO press conference last year. And it's really, it's, it's a nightmare in vast majority of countries in Europe. So we are talking about uh, the best of the best centers, the core centers. Mm -hmm. But you know, still chemotherapy, you know, if you explain these patients, chemotherapy is not of any value. You're, you are, you know, taking the only treatment opportunity in these countries.